guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is another PocketNow throwback where we're taking a look at some vintage Windows Mobile devices, devices that came out 8, 9, 10 years ago. Recently, we talked about the IPAC 3600 series, which really started the wave of PDA devices that have had similar functionality that you would find on a PC, so you could finally have uh, ca capabilities in your pocket that you would normally need to get only through a computer. It's really the, the start of the PDA revolution, and this is a very large device but also a very popular device. If we look at it next to an HD2, we see just how, how large it was in terms of thickness and in weight. It was an absolute monster, but you know people really didn't care because you got a 200 megahertz processor in a pocketable device. So we're gonna talk about the differences between this device, the 3600, and this device over here, the 3800, which is the successor uh, to the 3600. But first, let's take a look at this dock. I know a lot of people that had this device also had this charging dock. So this dock has a few features. First, you have stylus holders over here, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to pop out the stylus. And let's say you put this on your desk to sync, and you can pop in your stylus and have it within easy reach. Although I never understood why there were two of them there. Who uses two styli? I'm not sure. Uh, let's look around the device. We have a little slot for the wires to go through so it could sit nicely on a desk. And these were the days when you didn't have wireless syncing. So um, you definitely needed something like this. Uh, let's see what is on the end of this cable. We have two choices for connection. We have serial, I think this is serial, and also USB. So you could, uh, you could choose between the two. Okay, so let's talk about how the 3800 and the 3600 differ. And the 3600 came out in 2000, that's full 10 years ago, and then the 3800 came out two years later. Now the 3600 came with Pocket PC 2000, that was the name of the operating system. And this device came with Pocket PC 2002, although I haven't really used this, so it may have an updated version like 2003. Both devices have a 206 megahertz strong arm processor, and of course we're up to about 1,000 megahertz uh, now with the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. The 3600 had 32 megabytes of RAM and 16 megabytes of ROM for storage. The 3800 doubles that, 64 megabytes of RAM and 32 megabytes of ROM. Both of them have the same size screen with QVGA resolution, so that's just um, you know 320 across and 240 down. So really grainy picture that you would get from them. Um, neither of these devices support Wi-Fi, um, so you're not going to be able to get wireless internet, although you could buy an adapter that would allow you to uh, connect to the internet. I remember having an adapter for one of these devices, I forget which one, and it was a sleeve that actually had a networking port on it that you could plug a Cat5 into. Neither of these devices have Bluetooth, but they do have infrared, so you can transfer through very, very slow infrared. The 3800 added an expansion card slot here for SD, whereas the, uh, the 3600 did not have that, so you would actually have to get an expansion sleeve to be able to get that extra storage. GPS, forget about it. Camera, forget about it. These devices definitely didn't have those modern things. Although the battery in the 3800 was significantly bigger than the 3600. 3600 was at 960 milliamp hours, and this went all the way up to 1400 milliamp hours. So you really got a lot more battery life out of the 3800. So kind of let's go through the procedure here of, of uh, setting this device up. We have this screen protector here that I know a lot of devices shipped with. And you can kind of see the, the evolution of design here. So it went from this sort of ugly looking D-pad with a speaker inside of it to a, a nicer looking, almost artistic D-pad with the speaker up here. So quite a nice evolution. So it says tap the screen to begin. Of course, this is an old resistive touch screen, so you need to align it. And we have to go through this whole process. This was... This was changed in later versions of, of Windows Mobile, so you didn't have to go through this whole process. And tap the screen to begin, and now it's going to do some iPack stuff. And this was before HP bought Compaq, so this was actually the Compaq iPack, and now they have the HP iPack, which they really haven't done much with. They have the iPack Glisten, um, which is a Windows Mobile 6.5 device, but it's not getting that much attention because it doesn't do anything truly amazing. So here we are, and let's go through the settings and see what we're dealing with here. This is, again, the old vintage interface of Windows Mobile. So let's go to About and see what we have here. So this is uh, version 3.0, which I think means is 2002. 
let's see what kind of programs we have on here. The screen was very sensitive, just like the 3600, because it had a uh, recessed touchscreen, so the resistive layers were very close to one another compared to, say, the HTC um, Touch Pro or Touch Diamond, which really didn't have very sensitive screens because of uh, the, the flush touch screen that they built it with. So pretty good screen clarity, um, nothing like you would get today. The, the backlight is quite dim. Uh, very basic stuff. The operation is actually quite fast. There's nothing on here, obviously, right now. Um, here's the X button in the upper right corner. Let's see how long it takes to open up a new document. Oh, it just spits you right into the new document. You can access volume up here. Of course, there weren't two sliders um, because this did, doesn't have phone functionality. Let's dig a little bit more into the settings to see in expansion pack settings, so you can have an external battery for extra juice. You could have all kinds of expansion packs. I remember there was actually a camera expansion pack that we reviewed on PocketNow a long time ago. And let's see, compact audio. You can adjust the settings. Uh, bass boost if you're listening to MP3s. And people really started to get mobile with music uh, with this device. They, they loaded it up with MP3s. Windows Media Player would play the music very ugly interface here. Let's see what we're doing with memory. So right now we have free 27 megabytes of program memory. Not that much to work with. Of course we have a total of 32 megabytes. And over here with storage we only have 32 megabytes also um, for storing documents and photos. Self-test. It's kind of a developer tool here. Screen, of course, we can align the screen. Let's turn up brightness all the way and sort of see what um, what it looks like when we do that. And here, backlight. Brightness. Well, this is actually maximum brightness. This backlight is obviously dimmed over time because it it's quite a... It's not very bright. So anyway, guys, that was a quick look at the vintage IPAC 3800. I'm sure a lot of you remember this device. It was a big seller, and it really started... Uh, the wave of PDA devices that came down the line. This was well before uh, the smartphone operating systems when you could truly have some power in your pocket and be able to bring your calendar with you and your, your contacts. And with a big bulky expansion sleeve, you could get internet. It would be very, very slow, slower than 56K, but it could happen. This actually, I believe, has Internet Explorer on it. Probably the same version of Internet Explorer that was shipping a year ago because um, they haven't changed it very much. So that was, again, a look at the IPAC 3800. That's it for now.